connecting the dots. You know, people in the world use that phrase all the time to talk about just kind of get, getting a, 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 a epiphany and understanding of something. Like it suddenly came together and I understood it. So I, I, I connected the dots. Okay, so here's one of the dots. Going forward makes the difference. Hallelujah. Now, you know, uh, the book of Proverbs, I'll go ahead and leave this out with, with you a little bit. The book of Proverbs talks about the downside of being lazy. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're, we're not lazy. How many of you are willing to say, I'm not lazy? I know you're not. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, if you would, please, Gospel of John, chapter 21. Hallelujah. We're going to watch this happen. Praise the Lord. Uh, going forward makes a difference. Hallelujah. Because wh what happens when, when people get behind the power curve or behind the problem, then they are overcome. Hallelujah. But, but we, we're not, we're overcomers. You know, we overcome trouble. Hallelujah. Are you out there? So the Holy Ghost tells us ahead of time, and you know what, I, I want to say this to you. There's no other group of people on the earth that have the capacity of heart to handle the real trouble that, the, the, uh, that, it, that happens to people. The church ha has always, we've always been the ones that have, you know, <laughs> years ago they called it the stiff upper lip. Well, we're the ones that have the stiff upper lip. You know, we, we can make it through trouble. Hallelujah. And just about the time they think we're down for the count, you know, we just have a Holy Ghost fit. Hallelujah. And, and uh, you know, then we have a Holy Ghost idea like that one that I just read to you about. All right. So uh, you remember the night before Jesus was crucified, uh, he met with his disciples, and there was this, this interlude between himself and Peter, and Peter was very braggadocious at the time. This is before he got saved. But he, he, he was very braggadocious about being able to uh, handle any kind of trouble. You know, and uh, Jesus said, well, it's not actually going to be that way. Because before this night is over with, you will have denied me three times. And then, of course, the record shows that. All right, so this is kind of the aftermath and how Jesus... Uh, put him back together again so he could get up and, and get back running in the race, so to speak. All right, so Gospel of John chapter 15, uh, excuse me, uh, chapter 21, look at verse 15. It says, so when they had dined, now that was a supernatural dinner. Remember, Jesus showed up on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. They were out fishing and not catching anything. And, and he, he told them, well, he hollered, if you just drop the net on the other side of the boat, you'll, you'll have something. Yeah. And, and they caught a net, uh, even though it didn't break the net, they caught a net full of fish and, and dragged it up on the beach. Praise the Lord. So when they had dined, Jesus said, well, why don't we just eat the fish that you just caught? So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, now remember, uh, Simon Peter w was in a fallen state, so to speak. You know, he, he had believed on the resurrection, which meant that he was saved. But, you know, he, he didn't know anything to do but kind of go back to what he was doing before. So he, he was uh, what we would call backsliding. Okay, so he was falling away from the Lord. Okay. Uh, so when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Okay, now there, there, was, there was no indication anywhere else in the scripture that there was any kind of a rivalry between Peter and the other disciples before this chapter. Okay, but it, it's going to surface here and God's going to deal with that because uh, that, that would have been another stumbling block for Peter. Okay, and so what, what Jesus is going to do is get Peter back on a roll, get him moving again. All right, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said, yea, Lord, you know that I love you. And then he said unto him, feed my lambs. 
<coughs> now what Peter had to do was get busy doing what Jesus wanted him to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Now many believers find themselves in a similar situation uh, at times where uh, you're, you're kind of behind the, uh, the power curve, so to speak, and, and you don't even know what happened to you. See, see, Peter doesn't know what happened to him at this stage. But Jesus knew what he needed, and that was to get him moving again. Now, there is a dynamic involved in this that escapes many people, okay, and, uh, but here's what happens. When you start moving in the kingdom, God starts moving in your life. Amen. You know, one of, the, one of the dramatic things that happens is suddenly all of your prayers, you get all your prayers answered. You know, and, and, and instead of it being a, a long wait and you're, you know, um, hitting the, the gates of heaven or whatever, pounding the gates of heaven, uh, wow. You know, which is very unscriptural if you think about it. All you got to do is use the name of Jesus and you got heaven's attention. But that, that's when you're uh, in the right place spiritually. See, that, that you're able to understand that. The name of Jesus, there are no closed gates in heaven to us. Hallelujah. So uh, the pearly gates and all that's hogwash. Forgive me. And Peter's not going to let you in. In fact, he's not keeping you out. Nobody's keeping you out. All right. So uh, Jesus had to take the opportunity to get Peter moving. Otherwise, you know, what he would have done is he, he would have fallen back into some sort of disrepair, personal collapse, he was already failing at fishing, you know, and that would have continued because the curse would have just started manifesting and compounding in his life. Now, this starts to happen to believers, and they don't even know why. You know, they, they at one time they had favor with God, and now it seems like everything is against them. Well, the thing that, you know, this is the, the fix right here. It's time to get moving with God. Going forward, the dynamic of forward changes everything. Hallelujah. Which you will find repetitively throughout Scripture, particularly you see it in the New Testament. You know, God got all of them moving on accomplishing his, what he was doing Hallelujah. So uh, th this is what we're doing as a church body. We're, we're uh, you know, we decided to have a restart, which we talked about some time back. And so we have restarted. We decided to let COVID go by, and it did. We're de we decided to let the recession go by, and it did. Hallelujah. You know, I, I want to tell you something. We have uh, social media uh, that we now use to get the gospel out. So one of the things, our Facebook page, of you'll remember this a, a few weeks back, we had a testimony night. Yeah, well, it, it was the uh, best night on that particular feed. And, and uh, you know, I don't know which part of the, you know, it's 120 countries are now watching us. And I was just telling, you know, I, I think um, there's only 130 countries. <laughs> so, we, in other words, it's virtual satur saturation of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ going out of this place. Hallelujah. But, you know, what we decided to do was get up and get going. You know, we weren't lo lounging around and waiting for somebody else to do it. Praise the Lord. Forgive me if this is a little strong for you, but, you know, like I, I've been like this uh, ever since I got saved. Hallelujah. And, and I'm not going to hold back. All right. So, what is fire? Yeah, we're, yeah, we get, got to get our fire guy back. Oh, are you new, the new fire guy? Oh, you're, okay. 
Hallelujah. Stand up, let everybody see your shirt. That's a Psalm 23 shirt. Hallelujah. Yeah, and, and his red tennis shoes. Now, I've got on my nice tennis shoes here tonight, too. You know, yeah, so, uh, yeah. You know, the, I started out doing that, kicking the devil, and then I decided, well, it's bigger than that, you know. And so now I just kick every time the Holy Ghost uh, wants me to kick. So you, you can do that if you want to. Hallelujah. Why not? You know, just go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, <clears throat> he said unto him, feed my lambs, uh, which would, would have been a challenge. You can see it happen in the book of Acts. Peter, you know, Peter didn't uh, go back to the lounge place. You know, he, he, he never went back to the nets. He never went back to his former life. He never experienced any further uh, decline in his personal life. Okay? But, you know, that, that it does happen to people. Hallelujah. So maybe it's happened to you, uh, you know, and, and we're talking to people all over the world. So, uh, Hal, it's time to get up and get going. Hallelujah. All right, so then he said to him, verse 16, he said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said, yea, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, feed my sheep. Okay, so it was the, the lambs the first time. You know, the first time I read this passage, you know, the people that were uh, showing me the passage, doing the teaching, made a big deal out of the difference between the lambs and the sheep. And I thought, well, you know what? You know, what, what they missed was the whole story. They were pointing out, you know, the lambs and the sheep, and I thought, well, gee, you know, that doesn't that didn't have actually anything to do with what Jesus was talking about. Hallelujah. Lambs are just little sheep. All right, so verse 17, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said, Lord, you know all things, and you know that I love you. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Hallelujah. So he, he had to get him up and moving, which he did. You know, and, and like I said, the, the book of Acts is part of the history Okay, and then, then you could go back yourself and read uh, 1 Peter and 2 Peter and, and see that, you know, he, he uh, just went ahead and, and kept going. How, which was the case with, you know, th this is what the, the actually, you know, the, the Holy Ghost, I heard somebody call this uh, years ago, they called it the real Holy Ghost. <laughs> well, Hallelujah. Yeah, be, be, because there's some people that are mistaken about the Holy Ghost. But if, if you got the Holy Ghost, you're going to be getting the gospel out. One way or another. All right, so if you would uh, then please skip with me over to verse 21. This is where the rivalry temptation came in. So Peter was, you know, his first uh, declination was to uh, go back and get involved in what he was involved in before, and he, you know, he just went right back to failing. Hallelujah. But, but then uh, there's, there's this second one that we didn't even know was there, but you know, Jesus knew it was there, and the Holy Ghost knew it was there. And uh, Peter, uh, look, look back up, if you would please, uh, to verse 20. Then Peter, turning about, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his, his breast at supper. That was the, the night before Jesus was crucified. And said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? So in other words, John had a close personal relationship with Jesus. And uh, he, he would uh, lay his head on Jesus' breast. On his chest, but you know, we we didn't know at the time that Peter was jealous about that. But look at verse twenty-one. It says, "And Peter, seeing him, said unto Jesus, And what shall this man do?" Jesus said unto him, 
If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to you? In other words, what difference does it make what he's going to do? Follow thou me. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. So uh, Peter, you know, he, he had two snares removed uh, right there. And, and then he, he had a, 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 an in, a, uh, encouragement, a strong encouragement to get busy. Hallelujah. Now, that might be the case with you. You know, if you say, well, I am busy. Doing what? You know, you, you, can, uh, you can trim off things. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay. So, I, I'm going to take you through a few other verses. If you would, please go with me over to the book of Colossians. Praise the Lord. Chapter 3. So Peter found out that there was another speed that he could, that he could operate at, okay? and, and it would get him moving, praise the Lord. So going forward makes the difference, hallelujah. Now remember, uh, it's not your power and it's not my power, but if you want to participate in the power, then you have to take the message that he has and go with it. You can't change the message into something that you want it to say because then it will become your word rather than his word and there's no power for that. So you're, you're going to want to go with the word of God. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, verse 23 of Colossians 3 and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So uh, I, I would, you know, I just pointed out to you about Peter. Uh, and so he learned that one and, and got with it. So doing something heartily means that you're going to do it with all your heart. Another way of saying you're not going to hold anything back. Now people don't realize what they're doing to themselves when they refrain to move forward. Hallelujah. All right, so I'm going to ask you, if you would now, to go with me over to Psalm 119. Hallelujah. There are some things that people have to deal with sometimes. So uh, here, here's uh, just a little bit of, about it. Uh, sometimes people are held back uh, like Peter was, and, and I, you know, I don't think Peter actually even re realized it. You know, he probably didn't have a good look at himself in the mirror, but he found out. Okay? So sometimes people are held back by shame, okay, of past failures, and that's exactly what was happening with Peter. You know, he, he had a failure, in front of all the other disciples, and, and I mean, the whole world knows about it, okay? But, but uh, you know, so he, he was holding back, and, and, and he didn't realize that holding back like that was, was going to create this other dynamic of falling away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the, uh, and again, I, I'm just reading part of this to you, but the, the uh, book of Proverbs is full of that. You know, if, if, you, if you feed the wrong thing in your life, it's, it's going to uh, lead you in a wrong direction. Hallelujah. So, uh, people uh, fall behind with shame, past failures, praise the Lord, and then insecurities, well, I got sexually molested when I was a kid. Well, you know, uh, that might be true, but that, that's certainly not anything to hold you back and, and not to be making a small thing out of it, but probably almost everybody in America in some way was molested. Maybe it wasn't sexually, but maybe you were abused in some way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, but you know what? The power of God is more than enough to get you out from behind that insecurity and get you doing things that you didn't think you would ever do before. Hallelujah. 
Like we were just talking to somebody the other night, and they were talking about how, you know, how they uh, didn't want to stand up in front of people and talk. Well, I, I didn't choose this either. You know, and, and I was a, uh, really, I, I guess, uh, after I got saved in particular, I was a real quiet person. Okay, but the Lord had to get me out of my shell. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I did, you know, and, and he, he put me in a line of work whether if you don't uh, communicate, you don't eat. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then, you know, he gave us a, uh, a plan, a future, which involved uh, we had to use our faith to get money. Hallelujah. So, uh, you know, all of the reservations that I had about uh, myself with people, I had to get rid of all that. And I did. Well, maybe there's, you know, you well, Pastor, you know, we see some things that you don't see. You might. But you know what? I'm functioning. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so watch this. Psalm 119, verse 9. Uh, he says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word, by giving heed to his word. How will a young man cleanse his way? Hallelujah. Now, you know, just my, my testimony. Personally, I was a young man when I got saved. Saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and called into the ministry. Hallelujah. And I had some things in my life that, that you know, I was the only one that could cleanse it out. You know, nobody could do it for me. So uh, I took the word to it and learned how to do battle in my own life, first of all. All right, then verse 10, look at this. With my whole heart have I sought you. Let me not wander from your commandments. Hallelujah. And then verse 11, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Okay, so I'm going to put it in there. Okay, and, and the word is going to guide me. It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, so I'm going to ask you if you would please uh, to stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is just a regular Wednesday night service. Hallelujah. God is good. But I, I'm going to do something that almost kind of puts you on the spot a little bit. But, but this is a good spot to be put on if you feel like, you know, that this message was for you and that you specifically need to get going again. Now, I realize I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, and most of the people in this room are already going a, as much as you can go. But, there, there, you know, there's people watching, and, and we're, we're not the only ones uh, in the kingdom Hallelujah. But you, you can, <laughs> this was the thing that, that Peter had to recognize, is that Jesus was calling him out. And again, it was in front of the others. Now remember, Peter was the one who said, I go a fishing. So technically, he was leading all of those other disciples astray at the time. Because Jesus told them, I will make you fishers of men. That, that kind of went by the wayside. Hallelujah. But maybe that's happened to you, and you say, well, you know what? Uh, I, I uh, recognize some things that I did not recognize before, and I want to make a statement before Almighty God that uh, I'm going to step out from behind this barrier that's been holding me back, and I'm going to move forward regardless of the circumstances, and I'm going to learn how to use, this is part of the confession, I'm going to learn how to use the Word of God and the power of God to deal with difficulties so I can move forward. The gates of hell will not prevail against me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so if that's you and you say, that's, that's exactly what I want to do tonight. I want to do just exactly like what happened with Peter. Praise the Lord. And we're just going to stop here for a minute and give you a moment to uh, pray about that. Maybe it has to do with something financial in your life. Hallelujah.
Now, if, you know, if there aren't any, then there aren't any. Okay, but here. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God is good. Now, in any person's life, you, sh- you should understand, it's actually none of my business what it is that, that God wants you to do. So I, I'm not going to try to read your mail or talk about you. I, I, I've got my own stuff to deal with. You know? I'm going to mind my own business. Jesus loves you. I like that. You, you could, come on, step on up. Hallelujah. There you go. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, so what what we're going to do here, this is just a a, a very, this is called a prayer of commitment. Okay, so you're going to commit yourself to the things of God, and you're not going to hold back anymore. You're You're not going to fall back and at every opportunity decide to just pull pull out, pull the plug out, and let the steam go out of the thing. No, you're going to keep going. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful to be here tonight? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, well, let, let's pray that prayer of commitment. If you would, please just uh, say this with me. Heavenly Father, I accept and receive your full will for my life. Your way is perfect. Your will is divine. I say with my mouth that for the rest of my life, I will put your will first in my life in the name of Jesus. I will not pull back any further or ever again. I say with my mouth that I am a conqueror and I'm moving forward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. Yeah, I I wanna tell you this little story. Um, Before... uh, we, my wife and I even started dating. I was attending a denominational church, going to the college close by, and, and they invited me to a retreat. And so, and so uh, you know, it was back in the days when the, the acoustical guitars and uh, kumbaya, <laughs> come by here, Lord. Yeah. Well, so... Uh, there was like a, a, the girl that was like the spokesman of the group uh, got us out on this dock that was sticking out into this lake. And we had, a, you know, a, a little praise event. And then she asked me to close in prayer. <laughs> you know, and, and so uh, I, I just said the same thing that I always say. Well, Lord, your way is perfect. Your will is defi- divine. I will do whatever you want me to do because that's what I was praying. And so she came up to me afterwards and said, I've never been able to say that with my mouth. So what, what I, I just did with you was led you to say that with your mouth. Now, I recommend that you take it with you. Get your mouth used to saying it. And then what will happen is you'll find your feet following. And then before long, you'll end up, you, you'll see yourself doing something. I never would have done that before. Okay, are you with me? Yeah, so you'll kind of break out of the box. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, so let, let's uh, have an overall prayer and confession. This, this is another thing that, that people hold back on. You know, th- th- this is kind of a worldwide thing. There's a lot of people that believe in Jesus, but they've never said with their mouth that he is Lord. See, confession is made unto salvation. 
you leave the confession out of it, you're, you're not going to get saved. So let's do this. If you would, say this with me. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, I call you the Lord of glory. I confess you before God and man. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Lord Jesus, I also ask you, come into my life as my Savior. Wash me in your precious blood. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, Lord Jesus, for this fresh moment in my life. I am now moving forward regardless of circumstances or opposition. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.